Hey, what's going on guys? Terribly Tactical here today, and today I'm doing a bug out bag breakdown. Now, there's a bunch of different terms for these. It could be a bug out bag, a bailout bag, a get home bag, whatever it may be. That's what this is to me. Now, I have several of these bags. This is just one of them, but I wanted to go over this one and show you guys a couple things. What I got in here, the type of pack I'm using, and why, and why you should have one too. Now... A lot of people aren't preppers, maybe they're a gun guy, you know, or girl or whatever, they're into it, you know, the gear and the knives and the guns and the this, that, and the other thing, but they're not really into preparedness, even though that's kind of contradictory because, I mean, if you have a firearm, most likely it's for defense, and even if that's not its main purpose, obviously, given the opportunity, you will use it to save your life or the, life, the lives of your loved ones. You know, God forbid anything ever happened. So you're prepared in that standpoint. You know, if we carry a, a blade on us every day, you know, whether it's just to cut boxes or open mail or a string off your shirt, um, which you could also use it as a self-defense thing as well, you know, you're prepared in that aspect. So why not put together a little bag? You know, it doesn't have to be a complete backpack. It could be a sling bag, a duffel bag, whatever you want, and have something ready God forbid anything ever happens, because we cannot tell tomorrow, and you never know what's going to happen. You, you can't be prepared for everything, but you should at least try. So here, this is just my North Face backpack. Uh, I don't exactly know the model or whatever. It says Borealis or something on the bottom. I don't know if that's the model or the designation or whatever, but it's just a plain, regular, everyday-looking backpack, and that's really important. A lot of people, especially us tactical gun guys and stuff, you know, whether it's our range bag or our bug out bag, I have a few myself, you know, or our Minuteman bag or, or even an EDC pack or whatever. Most of the time, we're more geared towards getting the militaristic style, the tactical style. It's got molly all over it so you could attach more things, you know, whatever it is. And it's as, as functional as that is, it definitely screams gun or tactical or military, you know, stuff like that. Because people, even if they're not in the know, it's it's not a regular looking backpack to them. So in my opinion, for a bug out bag, a get home bag, you know, or even an EDC bag, if you can, you know, which is not as important uh, in this role, but I believe that you should have a non-military color backpack a backpack that doesn't have a bunch of molly all over it, you know, unless you really need that and you're really using it, but most of the time people don't. And I think it should just be a plain everyday backpack that a regular citizen would look, not even look at it, or if they saw it, not give it a second glance, thinking that there's anything suspicious about it. So that being said, let's dive into the pack. Uh, like I said, this is the North Face. I don't even know what it is uh, model-wise, but it's a backpack. It's decent. It's got some shot cord on the outside. I mean, just like the Molly, if you need to attach something, here you go. And this doesn't look military at all. This is a regular hiker's backpack. Uh, people use these for school backpacks, you know, whatever it is. So there's functionality there. It's North Face, so it's good quality. And it's a, it, it's a reputable, well-known brand. So people say North Face, they think, you know, you're some, you know, preppy kid from the Burbs and you got one of their jackets in every color. Um... It's got two water bottle uh, pouches on either side. They're the exact same. I have a stainless steel water bottle in here. Stainless steel is very important because you can boil it to purify water if you come across a contaminated drinking source. Uh, you can cook in it some, you know, to some degree, and you know it's durable. It's not going to crack or anything under, you know, extreme cold or or expand in extreme heat. It's going to do what you need to do. So stainless steel, not aluminum, stainless steel is what you need for your water. Up top in this little compartment, this is my fire starting kit. And I got some trioxane tablets. Let's get it all out here. Bunch of trioxane tablets. I think that's it. Alright, so here I got... Lifeboat matches, waterproof matches, a couple Bic lighters, and some cotton balls, which is excellent tinder. Um, it's in a plastic bag to keep everything dry, of course. Some wet fire and some military uh, trioxane tablets. These are excellent. They burn for a long time. They could really get a fire started, even in the rain. 
even if it's wet material. I have another just loose Bic lighter. Fire is very important. And obviously, if you can just flick a Bic and not have to sit there scraping a ferro rod to get a fire started, obviously do that. I also have this little cheapy uh, jet lighter. It's great. It'll run out eventually, but it's powerful and it's in there. As well as a ferro rod. This is just a Coolins or Kuglins or however you say it. Got this at Walmart, I believe. It was a few bucks. And uh, this is basically unlimited fire if you know what you're doing. It works rain, cold, um, you know, sunshine, snow, whatever it is. This works. But you have to know what you're doing and it's not easy and you have to have patience. But every kit should have one of these because this, this is a last ditch effort that will always be there for you. So that's my fire kit. Keep it right there accessible on the outside. Uh, fire, you know, is very, very important. And uh, another thing you guys got to realize is that, you know, in a bug out bag, um, you want to try and keep it light because you're going to be carrying this thing. You know, it's one thing if you have the capability of a vehicle, but most of the time um, in a serious situation, you might not. So you're going to be walking. So you got to keep this thing light. So just put in the stuff that you need. And leave out the stuff that you don't. You know, re redundancy is great. Two is one, one is none. But you have to draw the line somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to be walking around with a 50-pound bag. And you're not going to be able to get anywhere with it. It's going to weigh you down. It could hurt you. It could cause injury. And it's just not what you need. Plus, in a bug-out situation, and most of the time, you're going from point A to point B. You're not setting up camp and roasting marshmallows and doing this and doing that and swinging from a hammock. You're trying to get home or you're trying to get to a safer place away from your home or your work or wherever you are at that moment. So, you know, obviously it's good to have a bunch of different things, a bunch of different options, but don't go overboard with it. And hopefully from this pack you can tell, um, you know, I have everything I need and nothing I don't. This next pack is just an open, or this next pocket is just an open pocket. I mean, it's got organization, um, but this is like my main tools compartment. I got some gloves, some work gloves. You don't want to cut up your hands when you're doing stuff. Um, cheap little folder. This is the uh, the Fielder by SOG. It's like 7CR13. It's nothing impressive, um, but it is a folder. And I obviously always, this this is on top of your EDC. If you're watching this video, most likely you already carry something, you know, tools, Swiss Army knife, multi-tool, a, a, you know, a pocket knife, maybe even a fixed blade, a gun, stuff like that. So this, for me at least, is a complement to my already existing everyday carry. So I'm definitely going to have a better pocket knife on me than this. But this is just an extra, like I said, two is one, one is none. I have a glass breaker here. Obviously, for a multitude of reasons, that could come in handy. Some writing utensils, regular pen for, you know, standard writing, and then a Sharpie in case you need to leave a more permanent note somewhere on something that's not paper, and as well uh, to write tourniquet, your T on someone's forehead if you apply a tourniquet, um, and, and the time it was put on so people know when to take it off, and, and this, that, and the other thing. It's a great tool. It's literally weighs nothing and it doesn't take up too much space at all in here i have a compass with a whistle with my crkt eaton tool it's got a couple little hex drivers on there a uh, cap lifter a fork and a spoon so it's a spork it's lightweight it's easy to use i have used it before it works it doesn't cut your mouth up or anything then i have another more serious compass here Obviously, technology might be down, and you need to revert back to some old-school methods of getting things done. Just got a uh, cheap little Lansky fire starter here, or fire starter, excuse me, sharpener, knife sharpener. It's got a couple different options on it. It's great to have because, obviously, you need to take care of your tools in the field because you're not going to have the luxury of taking it to Bass Pro to get your knife sharpened for 5 bucks or having a stone at your house. You know, if you're out in the field and this is all you got, that's all you got, and you should have it. Some duct tape wrapped around an old card. Duct tape has a million and one uses, and it's one of the most valuable things that you can have in your bag. This is a nice way to keep it flat, and that's, just, I don't know how many yards of duct tape, but it's a good amount, and that's very important to have. Let's see what else I got in here. This is just a little Gerber um, 
flashlight runs off of one double A. Forget exactly how many lumens it is. It's probably no more than 20, but it's good for searching around the bag. It's good for keeping your night vision because it's not that bright. And uh, it's a light, you know, it helps you see in the dark. And that's going to be very important, you know, especially if you're traveling at night or any of the above. Got some hearing protection, which is great. There might be loud noises, you know, God forbid bombs going off, buildings collapsing like we saw at 9-11. If you have the time uh, to put them in, if you're engaged in some kind of firefight, which you should have a pistol either on your person or at least in your bag, in the very least. So that's great. Chapstick, obviously chapped lip purposes, but you could use this to help seal up wounds. Um, for fire starting purposes, it is somewhat flammable. And it's it, these are just too inexpensive, literally almost free. They're so cheap and very useful items. There should be no reason why they're not in your bag. Here... I have a $25 Leatherman, but for $25, bucks, this is a lot of Leatherman. Spring-loaded pliers, this is the Leatherman Wingman. I've done a previous review on this. It's an, one of my earliest videos. Go check it out. It's probably not the greatest um, video, but it'll give you an idea of the tools that it has. I can't waste too much time going into it. This is already going to be a long one as it is, but this is an excellent multi-tool for the money and my most recommended multi-tool for the money because it's definitely a medium to heavier weight multi-tool it gets a lot of stuff done it's great quality 25 year uh, warranty from Leatherman and it's got everything you need having a little uh, water filter and this is a straw one of those life straw type of deals but I think it's Aquamira is the brand this is obviously self-explanatory. If you don't have water, you can drink out of a pond, a retention pond, a river, whatever it is, and this is going to filter out all the particulate and the giardia and all that good stuff. Um, that's going to get you sick for up to 30 gallons. So you've got 30 gallons of drinking water right here, and it weighs nothing. Now, obviously, it's going to be hard to transport water or collect water using this, but you can fill yourself up on the way, keep yourself hydrated, you know, pass it around to your friends and family if they're not prepared, which if they're not, please encourage them to get prepared because it's a very easy thing to do. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of money. You could help them out and get it done, but it's very important. You know, the more we rely on ourselves the quicker the incidents will be taken care of. You don't want to be a victim. You don't want to be a refugee. So make it happen. Water is the most important thing in any survival situation. Let's see what else, what else I got here. Um, extra batteries. Obviously self-explanatory for all my electronics. I got double A's and triple A's going to uh, all my flashlights. I try and keep it... Um, regulated to double and triple A's. I do have some CR123A stuff in my bags. Uh, I don't think this one, but you know, they're common. They're easily found. A lot of people have them. Not many people have cr 123 So I try and keep it, you know, unanimous like that. Just plastic bags, uh, lightweight, take up no space, easy to carry anything in. They're somewhat waterproof. They will hold water so they can be a container. That's excellent. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Some dust masks, obviously um, useful if there's a lot of particulate in the air. Now, this is not going to, you know, save your life from, you know, a dirty bomb attack or, or whatever it may be. But, you know, if like 9-11, there's all the dust in the air, this will definitely help out. Again, lightweight, uh, minimalist. They don't take up any space. I have just a mini uh, fishing kit in here with some lines, some weights, some hooks. Uh, and some little baits in there. Obviously, if I had the chance and it was that severe, um, I could fish. I've done it before, you know, using a stick or even just your hand, and uh, it's very easy to do so if you know what you're doing. And, you, you know, you could set just things up. Got another flashlight. This is a uh, Ozark Trail. It's 150 lumens, but the beam on this thing throws. It's excellent. It runs off of three or four um, AAAs, but it lasts a long time. The light quality is excellent. And like I said, it throws a good beam. Here's some just water purification tablets. If I don't have the opportunity to start a fire and boil the water, obviously I could measure these out in how much quantity of water I have and take care of it that way. One's for the disinfectant and the other one's to get rid of the bad taste. 
Got some paracord. Cordage is extremely useful. Uh, this is probably about 30 yards worth of paracord. And then there's the inner strands as well, the seven inner strands. And it's just kind of tangled up. And I got it locked together with this little carabiner, which can be used for lashing as well. But cordage is also very, very important. For my fixed blade in the pack, again, I'm going for a lightweight theme. It's the Mora uh, Light My Fire collaboration. It's got the integrated ferro rod, and it's super sharp. You can do a lot with this. You could baton with it no matter what anybody says. It's lightweight, and it's orange, so if I drop it, I could find it. Very important. Here's a little Kuglin survival kit in a can. It's just got a bunch of, uh, you could pause the screen right now and read that. It's got a bunch of stuff in there that definitely could come in handy. And, uh, you know, this it would even be good for an EDC. If you just slip this in a pocket, a cargo pocket or something, every day, you'll have an excellent little survival kit in a can. I got a review on this. Check this out. And this wasn't more than about eight, nine bucks, I think, like on Cheaper Than Dirt. And uh, for that money and the convenience and keeping it, sealed and, and ready to go and then as well after you use it you have a container that you could cook with that you could boil water with that you could drink from whatever it may be so it's all inclusive and uh, it's definitely a start no reason you shouldn't have something like this already put together in your kit or maybe your own personal made Altoids kit this is a little LED glow stick basically this is good for signaling and this is good for just lighting up the camp it's red so it won't put off too much light in the dark um, you know around camp so you're not gonna lose your night vision you're not gonna give away your position um, but you could lash this to some paracord and, and twirl it around like you're at a rave and definitely get someone's attention and zip ties excellent for lashing um, obvious purposes if you did you know these aren't really that great a quality but if you did have to uh, detain somebody or whatever or lash something to, to your pack or help put up a shelter obviously those would come in handy and I know this looks like a lot of stuff it's all you know all over the table but it's relatively lightweight and everything has a function and a purpose and it's it's all decent quality stuff here's just a little cheapo expandable water container water bottle uh, it's lightweight you could fill it up obviously transport it it comes with this little carabiner you could lash it on the outside of your pack um, so you don't have to worry about it getting poked and spilling all in your pack and ruining the rest of your goods here's an adventure medical kits uh, first aid this is the 1.0 and I've added things to it uh, this is an excellent kit go check it out uh, you know I added some few things I'm not gonna go over it but it's an excellent kit uh, especially for the money it's somewhat water resistant in the pouch that it comes with. It's a good, strong, durable pouch. And they give you a readout and a list of everything that's in there and instructions and tips and all that good stuff. Ace bandage. This could be used as a compression bandage. Obviously sprained ankles, thing, things like that. You definitely want to go heavy on medical because um, in disaster situations, whether you or someone else is definitely likely to get hurt. SOL. Um, shit out of luck as I like to call it or survive outdoors longer as they like to call it this is their bivy this is way better than just a mylar blanket this is something you actually get into it's lightweight it's compact although once you use it you're probably not gonna be able to stuff it back in there but it works and God forbid you know you use this that's the last thing you're worried about so this is a bivy it's basically a little sleeping bag that's uh, heat reflective off of your own body heat excellent it's gonna be a you know 25 bucks basically but it's well worth the money got a couple dehydrated meals that are good for a very long time they're by mountain house you can pick these up at walmart or wherever else you know you shop frequently bass pro dicks you know meyer stuff like that you add water it doesn't necessarily have to be hot but it's preferred and then you have a meal and these are this is good for one person i think this is good for two people or two meals and they're lightweight easy to carry Back here I got some more redundancies, some shelter building. This is just a regular Mylar blanket. Um, obviously you can make a lean-to out of this, as well as this. This is just a cheap poncho. It was about a dollar, I think, at Meyer. Keep the rain off you, keep you dry. I got green because if I'm in the woods making a shelter, if it comes to that, it'll somewhat blend in. And uh, just simple self-explanatory stuff, guys. And uh, you could look up, you know, obviously this video and many other videos, and they're going to tell you you know why you should have things and and what things you should have and that's great but you know I don't have the uh, the time to do all that a lot of the stuff is self-explanatory and there are definitely millions of resources out there that are great for that um, this is basically like a mylar setup as well 
Uh, it's an emergency tent. You can see on the picture how it strings up. You know, you get between two trees, and then you could even duct tape one side or both sides closed. And uh, it's eight foot by five foot, and you know everything's included that you need to make it. And it's flat and it's lightweight, so that's excellent. Toilet paper, super duper important. If you don't have access to a bathroom, or even or even if you do and there's no toilet paper, you have to wipe your ass because you do not need to be hiking miles and miles with swamp ass or with dingleberries. You're going to get a rash, it's going to hurt, it's going to slow you down, you could get an infection. So just some simple rolled up toilet paper. I think this is about half a roll rolled up uh, like this and then waterproofed by the Ziploc toilet paper. When you're having a shitty day, you don't need to be having a shitty day. This is a waterproof little uh, container that I have with some writing utensils and, you know, extra lighter. And this is maps of the area where I live and my state and places that I go. And then I didn't even know this was in there, but that's We Sing Silly Songs. That's hilarious. I had no idea that was in there. But, you know, that might be a, a morale booster, I guess. But, you know, you might not be trying to get found. Um... Here's a little pamphlet of different things, medical things, and what you can do to cure them. You know, just some quality information in a waterproof pack uh, that you should have with you. You should definitely have maps of your surrounding areas, um, of your town, your city, your state. And uh, I think that's about it, guys. Um, you know, you got the medical, you got the cutting, you got the cordage, you got the, sh the shelter, you've got combustion with the fire, you've got... Uh, your containers and your cooking and everything you need it's a lot of gear it's a lot of stuff and there's one thing that's missing I'm looking to get a used just a cheap old Glock 26 or Glock 19 to put in here and just dedicate it to the bag and leave it there and never touch it and have it ready as long or as well with some spare ammunition I haven't found one yet, and I haven't found a good price on one yet, so that's why there's not one in there, but given I'm always going to have a firearm on my person and or in my car or both, you know, obviously if I'm at home, I got, you know, the pick of the litter um, to take with me, but you should always, if you legally can, have a firearm with you on your person in a bag at least, you know, with transport laws, it's, if it's got to be unloaded, whatever, keep the magazines loaded, you know, load make ready if you have to. In a, in a shit hit the fan scenario, the laws are out the window, so you load that thing and you stick it in a holster and you put it in your pants. And you walk where you need to go. You don't bother anybody. If somebody bothers you, you can take care of the situation, obviously justifiably. But people are going to get desperate in situations like this, and you need the ability to defend yourself. So... That is very important. That's something I'm lacking in this kit. I'm going to add a little bit more medical to it, like a tourniquet or two, uh, reorganize some things, and uh, maybe take out a couple things that are a little redundant and possibly add some better quality items as well. But leave me a comment. Leave me a suggestion. Let me know what's up. Let me know uh, what you think of my setup and my opinions and philosophies as far as the bug out bag, the get home bag goes. Uh, sorry, the the video went a little a little bit long, but there's a lot of content in here, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to go over every single thing in detail. But remember that you know this this is an idea of something you should be doing, of something your friends and family should be doing, and you have a lot with you. God forbid anything happens. That's the main, you know, you don't need too much, but that's the main point. You have things with you to help aid in your survival of you getting home, of you helping yourself or others in a terrible situation, and to be ready and be prepared at all times. So on that note, this is Terribly Tactical signing off, hoping you enjoyed the video, reminding you to stay safe, stay armed, definitely always be prepared. And don't ever think about treading on me. Peace.